What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? If you're having trouble finding an answer, just ask Henry Brown. Even though he stuffed himself into a box and sent himself on a 26 hour long trip to freedom, he still found something to be thankful for. Henry Brown was a slave in Richmond, Virginia, and like many others who had gone before, he knew that living at the will of another was no life at all. In the 33 years of his bondage, Henry never once got whipped and he was always kept well fed and clothed by his master. He was never overworked. Henry, in his own words, called his situation the very best representation of slavery. But Henry experienced, to put it in his words, lashings of the heart when his wife and children were sold to another master. It was then that Henry decided to run. But he was a smart guy. He knew that if he was caught, it would be worse for him than if he died trying. He knew that for a successful escape, he had to think outside the box. So he put himself inside a box. Henry found a man named Samuel Smith who was willing to close up the box and send Henry by land via the Adams Express to Philadelphia. All right, let's think about this for a bit. 26 hours, 275 miles from express man to express man, wagons, trains, what are issues here? Space, of course, that can hardly be helped. They did line the inside of the box with bays so bruises and blisters wouldn't be so bad. Not at first anyway. Air, of course, is a big issue. They put small holes into the box to let him breathe, but again, not much you can do there. Food and water, a small biscuit, a few of those maybe, doesn't sound too bad, but I bet being cooped up in a box with minimal airflow works up quite the appetite. Because the only witness to the event was Henry himself, and he was in a box, there isn't much known about the journey itself, other than the fact that some of the expressmen ignored the this side up with care sign. So let's go to the anti-slavery office in Philadelphia, where several anxious men are waiting for a box to show up at their door with a maybe live man inside. Present were James McKim, the organizer of the whole operation. Charles Cleveland, a very active abolitionist in the area, Lewis Thompson of Merrihue and Thompson, the only newspaper in the city that dared to print anti-slavery papers, and William Still, a freeborn black abolitionist and famous contributor of the Underground Railroad. The package finally arrived. Tensions were high as James, the calmest of the lot, knocked on the lid. No one knew whether they were about to have a celebration or a funeral. Charles Cleveland had had many experiences with helping fugitives, but they always came to him alive, and he always knew that they were alive. An escape like this was unheard of. All right, sir, came the answer from inside the box. In a few moments, the unboxing of Henry Brown was complete, but the attitude of this weak, shaking, sweaty, soaked man that stood before his welcoming party was not one of fatigue. No, Henry was the very embodiment of energy. How do you do, gentlemen, he said. The little group hardly knew what to do. Henry broke the silence by telling his new friends that in Richmond, he had chosen a hymn to sing if he had survived the trip. Even a thanksgiving, even a thanksgiving unto our God. Through all that he experienced, the thing at the forefront of Henry's mind was still thanks. I don't think we need to stuff ourselves into boxes for 26 hours in order to find something to be thankful for. Though I do hope that hearing and experiencing this story for yourself has helped. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy Thanksgiving!